What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be starting our Shiny for Python series. Now, Shiny is an open source web application framework for Python and R as well, but we're gonna be focusing on Python. And what we're able to do is create interactive dashboards and basically complete websites all within Shiny. Throughout this series, we're gonna start with the very basics of getting it set up. We're gonna be learning all about the different components and how you can customize your web app. And then in the last lesson, we're gonna build a complete Shiny app. So there's gonna be a full dashboard with a bunch of different things on it. It's gonna be really interactive. It's gonna be amazing. Now in this video specifically, we're gonna be getting everything set up. We're going to be using VS Code. We're going to download all of the libraries and different packages that we need. And then we're even going to deploy our very first web app. Without further ado, let's jump on my screen and get started. Now, before we jump into installing and creating our environment and launching our very first Shiny app, I just want to start off by looking at the Shiny website. There's so much here. This is a fantastic place to learn as well as get a lot of ideas for creating your dashboards, as well as, you know, Posit who creates all of this is just amazing with their websites. So if you're looking at Shiny for Python, they have a whole suite of different things that you can do, as well as they have a playground where you can test all of these different uh, Shiny things that you wanna test. So if we wanna come down here and uh, look at reactive calculations, then we can come in here and we can learn how to do that in their environment. So they have a just a ton of stuff. Um, one of the biggest things that we're gonna be looking at in the next several lessons is components and layouts. And as we're building this web app, you're gonna say, oh, I really want a button here. And so I want an input for them to be able to click on it or I wanna switch it to dark mode. And uh, these are all things that they have right here. Or we can go further down and you can do outputs. So if you wanna output a uh, matplotlib visualization or plotly or seaborn, you can do that. Uh, or just, you know, a data grid. You can do all these things. They show you how to do that. Um, and so these are just an invaluable resource when you're building these web apps. And I personally, when I was building this out and building out this series, I was in here a lot, uh, testing out different things, seeing how they worked. Now the next thing, and we're gonna be getting into this in you know, right over here in this part, this is how we actually host it and create the website. And so we're going to be using uh, shinyapps.io. This is how we are going to actually share your Shiny application online. Because we have to deploy it, right? So that you can share the link and people can use it. And you can do this for free. Now you can also pay if you, you know, want to host multiple web pages or multiple um, apps. You can do that and it does cost money or you can do it for free. And we're going to be looking at the free version of how to do that. And we'll even even, you know, launch and deploy our app by the end of this lesson. So I uh, just wanted to show you all that because that stuff is really, really important. Now, if we come back here to Shiny for Python, we have an install button. Now let's go to install and install is quite easy. All we have to do is go into our IDE and we have to pip install Shiny. And that's it, it's as easy as that. And then I'm gonna show you a bunch of other stuff to actually really get your uh, environment ready for everything that we're gonna be doing in the next several lessons. But that is really all we have to do. Now, what we are gonna do is we're gonna come right over here, we're gonna go to Anaconda. And you don't have to use Anaconda, but I'm just using it for the simplicity. I usually use, for a lot of my Python tutorials, I use Jupyter Notebooks, but we're gonna be using VS Code. Uh, which is right here. And I'm using VS Code specifically because they have a Shiny extension, which really, really helps with this whole development process. And so I personally uh, really, really think that's something you need to have. So we are gonna be using that. So let's go ahead and we're gonna launch VS Code. Now, once we open up VS Code, one thing that we need to do is go right over here to extensions. And we're gonna come up here, and we're gonna type in Shiny. Now we should see uh, Shiny right here. It says run and develop Shiny apps in Python or R. Now you want to make sure you have this. The reason for this is they have something right here. You can run and debug your Shiny apps just using this little button right here. It's fantastic. And so you can come in here and you can see, uh, read a lot of their documentation on everything. Uh, one of the other things to mention is we're gonna be using Shiny Express. They do have something called uh, just Shiny or Shiny Core, which is a lot more technical in my opinion, whereas Shiny Express, you can get so much done with Shiny Express without ever having to really dig into the really complex stuff or the more complicated stuff. And that's what I personally prefer. So we're gonna be uh, looking primarily at Shiny Express. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come right over here and we are going to create a new file. So we're gonna come in here and and we want to create a py file or a python file so we're just going to call this app.py and i'm naming this specifically app.py uh, for right here 
For single file apps, e.g. app.py or app.r, run the create shiny live link from active file from the command palette. Uh, all that being said, we need to be called app.py so that when we actually try to deploy this, it will uh, understand that this is the file that it's looking for. So we need to name it that app.py. Um, in here, I don't know if it talks about this, but we're also going to need a requirements txt file. Now this is in documentation um, on their website, so we do uh, we do need to have this. So I'm going to create one more just real quick. It's just going to be called requirements. Dot. We'll do txt, just like that. Now this is going to be uh, for again when we deploy it, it's going to read in the packages and it's going to use those packages when deploying. So if we use a package in here, we need to also put it in this requirements. Txt. It all make sense as we start getting into it. Now let's come back really quick. We need to go um, in here and we're going to come back here and we're going to sign up for the shinyapps.io. Once we do that, we're going to actually uh, take some code from in here. Maybe we'll go to some components layouts or maybe we'll mess around with something in the playground and we'll copy it and we will actually launch this and deploy this so it's a real website. But we need to sign up really quickly for an account. So we're going to go over here. We're going to go to uh, sign up and I'm going to sign up with my Google and uh, you do the same. And then once we're on to it together, we'll take a look. All right. So I just logged in. It says, let's get started. You'll need an account before you can deploy any applications. Account names can contain letters, numbers, hyphens, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this um, Alex, the analyst, shiny app. And we'll call it that. So what's going to be is HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash Alex the Analyst shiny app dot shiny apps dot AO. Now you can name this anything you want it has to be uh, unique. But if you want to name this your name, I could do it Alex Freeberg. So I could come in here and say Alex Freeberg. And if that wasn't taken, I can just save that. Uh, so we'll just go back. I'm going to call it this and we're going to click save. And now there are a few things that we need to do to actually get started. We have to install something called the RS Connect. This is the actual package that you need to deploy it into the shinyapps.io. Now we need to do this with Python. So we're going to come in here. We're going to do pip install RS Connect. One thing that we also need to do is start a terminal really quick. This is my file path. We also need to pip install shiny so be sure to do that i already have it installed so it's going to say i meet all uh, the requirements but make sure you pip install shiny and then once it's done we can also come in here and pip install rs connect dash python now i also have this already installed so i meet those requirements but we have to have that uh, in order to deploy it and use shiny in general so make sure you have those two things installed now we're going to come back here the next thing we have to do is authorize our account. So we created this account. My account is Alex the Analyst Shiny App, but we have to come in here and we need to run this as well. So we're going to copy this to my clipboard. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to run this. It's going to uh, check the credentials. It's going to say it added it and we're good to go. So now let's go back up here to the website. The last thing we actually have to do is to deploy this. And we can't deploy it if we don't have code. So what we're going to do is let's come up here to some shiny examples. And this is a very basic app. Uh, let's take a look at this one right here. So let's just run this. And this is a very, very, very simple application right here. We're using matplotlib, numpy, and shiny. And so we don't know any of this yet. In the next lesson, we'll be diving into a bunch of different things and how we can actually build all of this out. But let's just copy this. And we're going to go back and we're going to paste this right here. Now, what we need to do is we need to save this. I'm going to do control S and that's going to save this file. And then I'm going to take matplotlib, numpy and shiny, and I'm going to put them in here. So I'm going to say uh, matplotlib, shiny, and I think it was numpy, numpy. So now I'm going to save that as well. So I did control S and that's going to save it. You can also come up here and hit save, which is again, the shortcut is uh, control S. I'm just going to use control S uh, for this. But now what we can do is we can come over here and we can run our shiny apps. So let's try this. Let's run our shiny app. 
you're going to see right down here a bunch of stuff happens. Uh, really what's happening is, is it is pulling up that shiny library and in that extension that we're using. And we are able to run this and actually view what it's going to look like on our website or on our web app when we actually create it. So it does a bunch of stuff down here, but it eventually creates that connection and we can see our uh, web app right over here. Now, in order to actually use this and deploy this, we have to do uh, something right over here. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna say RS Connect. And we're gonna say RS Connect, and it's gonna bring us a bunch of different options. So it's just gonna tell us that this can be used uh, for Posit Connect, Posit Cloud, ShinyApps.io, and here's some of the options that we can do. Now, we want this one right here, which is to deploy this. So what we can do, is we can say RS connect, and then we'll say deploy. Now it's gonna ask us, what are we actually deploying? So we said RS connect deploy. Down here, we are deploying, that's right, a shiny app. So we're gonna come right over here. We're gonna say RS connect. We're gonna say deploy shiny. Then we're gonna do dash N. And what we need now is we need that name that we used right over here. So for my account, it's Alex the Analyst Shiny App. You're gonna need yours. So we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna say Alex the Analyst Shiny App space dot. Now what this dot is actually doing is it's getting our current file path. So this file path right here where these, uh, the app.py and the requirements.txt are located, and it's gonna deploy that. Now you can get more specific uh, if you want to do it from a different you know, folder or something like that, you can specify the folder name. But let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Real quick, while this is all happening, uh, it's just making sure our server is there. It's looking at our requirements.txt, so it's looking at uh, the packages. And then it's actually gonna be building it out, and then it's going to deploy it for us. And there we go. Now, this is not the prettiest web app in the world, but you now are able to deploy this. And now you can uh, use this right here and you can share this link with your friends and say, hey, I built this web app. Now, this is a very, 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 very simple one. In the next lesson, we'll be using real data and we're gonna create some actual visualizations using those components and the layouts. And if you come in here, we go to our applications and we come into all, you can see that this right here is in fact running. And so you can come in and you can, uh, let's say you're you know, getting an error or something. You can come in here and you can look at the logs and you can see why is my app failing. And this has been really helpful for me when I was making you know mistakes early on. This was really, really helpful for me to understand why a package wasn't installing right or I was using the wrong library or it was out of date. And so you can come in here and get a lot of information. So it's super, super helpful. But uh, we now have a live web app. Now this is a super simple one, again, in the next lesson, we're gonna be using real data and we're gonna be really diving into the layouts uh, and components here. So these two specifically, because there's so much that you can do with it. And we're gonna be using real data to really dive into this and make sure you know what you're doing. So I hope you're able to follow all of that, get up and running. That is kind of the hardest part. Um, if you come over here, you'll now see we have this uh, shiny.json. If we click on it, once we actually deployed this, it says, okay, this is uh, the server. Here is where the files are. Here's your app URL. So I hope you're able to get up and running with Shiny. If you're not used to VS Code, uh, you know, just do exactly what I do. VS Code, maybe a little bit intimidating for some, but I promise you by the end of this series, even you'll be a VS Code master because it's fairly intuitive once you get into it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout out to Posit for creating Shiny for Python. It was only in R for a long time, but now they brought it to the Python community and I am super excited about it. So huge shout out to Posit. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I will see you in the next video.